Problem solving skill is the most important skill you can develop as a computer science major. Some of you guys have asked me how to improve your problem solving skills, so I thought I would make this video to walk through how I try to improve my own. I'm not a genius and I have to work pretty hard to get some concepts stuck in my head, so when I say this method works for me, it'll probably work for you too as long as you put in the work. I think to some extent problem solving ability is innate, it's something you're born with, but as long as there's practice available, you can get better even though you might be skill capped. For example, you can practice chess every day for long hours and you might never be as good as Magnus Carlsen. You probably never will be Magnus Carlsen. You can practice competitive programming every day for hours, but you probably will never be number one in the world at it. And that's fine because you're going to be getting really, really good. You might not be the best, but you should try to get better and get good every single day. Just trying puts you ahead of most people, so you might as well try to improve your skills and we're going to talk about how to do that right now. You need to practice a lot to get better. This is not a surprise to anyone, but the way you practice matters just as much as anything else. Let's take two people, Alice and Bob. They're both studying for coding interviews, but the way they practice differs a lot. Alice is only doing lead code easies because that's all she feels comfortable with, and even as she improves, she doesn't up the difficulty of her questions and she stays stuck on lead code easies. Bob, on the other hand, also starts with lead code easies, but as he feels himself getting a little bit better, he starts to challenge himself and move up the difficulty of the problems. He continues to do this until the day of the interview arrives. Who do you think ends up doing better in the interview? Definitely Bob, or at least that's my opinion. If you don't think so, tell me why in the comments. But Bob did harder problems, he pushed himself, and he did progressive overloading, and that made him better at the interview. So when you're practicing problems, you need to be constantly progressively overloading. That means you need to be doing harder problems over time. Start out with easier problems and go to harder and harder and harder problems as you get more comfortable in your ability to solve these problems. This isn't rocket science, but like with all advice, you need to hear it from a bunch of different people before it finally sinks in. Additionally, the problems you should do should be quality problems. If you're doing bad problems that are way too easy for you or way too difficult for you, you're not going to learn anything. And luckily for you, if you're solving questions for something like math or physics or traditional computer science classes and data structures and algorithms, you're going to have a bunch of lists available on the internet to follow through with questions that are quality questions curated by other people and professionals that'll help you get better because they're representative of all the patterns that you might see in the problems in those fields or topics. And they're usually listed in increasing difficulty so you can progressively overload pretty easily. And if you want to do this for lead code, which you might have clicked on this video for, you can just go to one of the lists like need codes on his website and just go through that. They're representative of the patterns you need to know and they're increasing in difficulty so you can get better over time. Now, if you want to get better at just normal software engineering, something that's really helped me in terms of problem solving, which I think of as debugging, has been not really resorting to Stack Overflow or another person for help for at least a little while after I run into an error. If I run into an error or a bug, I'm going to give myself, you know, an hour or two to try and figure it out by myself. And if I feel myself making no headway at all, then I'll go and ask somebody for help or then I'll go and ask Stack Overflow for help. And at that point, that's fine. You know, you did your best. You tried to solve the problem, but you couldn't do it. But you'll notice that a lot of these errors and bugs, you don't need to immediately Google. You can solve them yourself and that'll get you intuition and you'll get better at solving these problems. I made a whole video about this and I'll leave a link in the description down below talking about how you can actually use Stack Overflow to solve problems and how to solve problems yourself. And I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can go check it out after this video. Consistency is key. You need to be working on improving your problem solving skills every day. Put in an hour or two every day or however much time you can afford and just stick to that consistently so that you can build a habit of problem solving so you can get better at problem solving over time. Now, I know that it might be hard for you to pay attention a lot at the beginning because you have a TikTok addled brain. So start out with 15 minutes every day, then 30 minutes every day, and then an hour a day as you get more comfortable with sitting down for periods of time and solving problems by yourself because I know your TikTok brain is really struggling with it right now. And you might not notice it at first because you think, hey, I'm not really improving that much by just doing this a little bit every day. But over time, you're going to notice that your power and prowess as a problem solver will just be increasing to the moon very quickly. And that's all there is to it. I know this might seem a little bit disappointing to some of you because you expected crazy tips and tricks to get better at problem solving, but it really is just as simple as putting in the hours in and doing high quality practice. Thank you so much for watching through the entire video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Peace out.